Hello everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz video tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to create simple looking vases for your architectural renderers or for whatever type of uh, scenes that you want to place these guys in. Um, it's a very simple tutorial but it just goes to show that you can make things quite fast um, and if you need to fill uh, your scenes with a little bit more objects um, and you need something like these vases here, you can do so. Um, so we're going to go and uh, use Octane to render this guy out. Um, and I'm going to create something uh, very similar to this, okay? So let's get to it and um, start off with the perspective mode, or perspective window. And we'll come up and we are going to, actually we're not going to go to perspective, we'll go to the front. And we'll come into a line tool here and we're just going to drag out, like so. We're just going to get pretty close to our center of the grid. Okay, so right now we should have two vertices on each end. We'll select our segment. Okay, we'll come down and we will now divide this guy into maybe 10 points. So once we do that, we hit divide. And we can see we got these extra vertices, okay? That's going to create our ribs uh, that are going to be in the vase, or coming out of the vase. So we'll grab um, every other uh, vertice here. Okay, we'll just bring these guys out. Just so we get something like this. Okay, so we'll have this extra spot for a lip that we can use. Uh, so when we start to bring this guy together, we can start to create our opening here. All right, so let's now grab all our points. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the fillet tool. We're going to fillet these guys so it gets a little bit smoother, something like this. Okay, and then what we can do is we can now preview this guy. All right, so we can come over and we're going to call this phase or pause. Okay, and then from there, we're going to use the lathe modifier. We're going to say to the minimum so we'll have to bring this in X at zero go to perspective mode here we got a large very large pause right now so we'll just have to bring this guy down okay I'll center the object or center the pivot drag this guy down okay to get it to a more reasonable uh, size so, so far we're working with this guy here. So, it's not looking too bad, but we have to also cap our ends, or our end here, and then we're going to just add some more uh, details at the top here. So, we'll just go back to our lathe, um, our profile here. Okay, let's turn back the grid on. And um, let's figure out what we want to do with this guy here. So we can grab this point, we go a create line, we can uh, snap to this point, and that's by uh, hitting the S key. And if you go to your snap toggle, you right click, you can uh, control it by vertice. Uh, you don't really need grid points, you just need vertex. Okay, and then just grab that guy and just bring it close here to the center of the grid. Okay, our zero point. And then we just got to make sure we weld this guy together, like so, and we can reset the tangent. Okay, I'm going to go to Bezier. Okay, not the corner, we're just going to try to, we're going to have to refine this a little bit and bring this guy in a bit. Okay, let's move this guy out a bit. Let's go reset. Okay, so if we go and uh, view what we have here, you can see now we got that little extra piece that comes up, that little lip, all right? And actually, we'll go to our preview. And what I want to do here is just grab 
this corner here. Let's uh, fillet this one as well. Okay, that should be pretty good. Okay, maybe something like that. Okay, so once we have this, um, what we're going to do is we are going to create a shell modifier here. We're just going to add that to it. Okay, make sure the shell modifier is above the lathe. And then we get some thickness here. So now what we can do is um, go from our outer. So I'm going to go put 2.5. Okay. And um, okay, so now we're just going to make sure that our lathe is acting correct here. We just want to make sure that we weld the, the middle here. Okay, and if I bring, let's take a look at our line here. Okay, and that's correct. Okay, and if we put a turbo smooth on here, there we go, everything is looking good so far. So that should be working quite nice. We just might want to add, we'll convert this to an edible poly. Oops, before we do that, we just want to make sure Okay, and then what we'll do here is just grab these edges, say loop, come in here and chamfer these guys. This is gonna create us a nice little edge. Now when we apply the turbo smooth, you can see that we got a nice little edge to catch the light. Okay, and there you have it, there's our vase. So, now what we need to do is we need to get our grass that comes out the top. And I have a script that I use called Debris Maker 2. Okay, you can uh, Google De Debris Maker and you can find the website. It'll come up pretty much the first thing that comes up. And that website, in that website, you'll have the um, installation instructions and you can install this if you don't have it or you can use another uh, method. But uh, just to speed things up, I'm going to use Debris Maker. We'll um, go with the grass. I'm going to go with one turf count and we're going to use, let's see here, yard grass. Okay, once I have what I like here, I'm not going to play with these properties down below. I hit generate and you can see we've generated some nice blades of grass that we can um, put into our vase. So, right now, what happens is we have a hair and fur modifier added to. Are, um, there's like a little, you know, let's just hide this guy. There's a, uh, a disc, okay, and what's coming out is the hair and fur. So what we need to do is if we want to scale this down to our vase size, we get everything kind of acting incorrect. And that's because we have the hair uh, and fur modifier applied. So we need to pretty much collapse this as an edible poly or turn this into a mesh. So what we're going to do is come down to, um, where is it here, it's tools, and you'll see right where it says convert, we can say hair to mesh. All right, and now we should have one here, perfect. And then there's another piece, I believe there should be like a center, this one here. So if we convert that to the mesh as well and bring this out, okay, we can see the one that we have. This is the mesh version. Let's just bring that guy here. And let's just delete these guys out. All right, so there we go. So pretty much the grass is now converted and we can now use this to scale properly. So let's go to our top viewport here. And let's scale this down and let's just try to get this in the pot. Go to the front view, drag this in. Get something like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
And if you want, you can make this fuller. We can um, hold shift and we can rotate and duplicate a uh, some strands. Okay, same with this one as well. Just to make, make it a bit more interesting. Fuller. Okay. Just make sure nothing's going, none of the blades are going through our vase. And you do something like that. All right, so we have now modeled the vase with the grass blades quite quickly. And now we can use this for a tabletop or whatever it is that we want to put this um, vase on in your scene. So let's go over to our render setup and I'm going to use Octane. Uh, you can use V-Ray, whatever it is, the, the render engine that you choose. Uh, it's pretty much straightforward um, when it comes to just lighting this guy up. All right, so let's go to, uh, I'm going to open a Octane viewport. And I already pretty much set up a um, HDR. Okay, so if I just kind of get close here and let's just try to get this guy. I have an autofocus on right now, uh, so it might go out of focus as I move, but then that should be good for now. Okay. All right, so we need to just put in our porcelain color or our porcelain material here as the white color and then um, the grass will have to do some subsurface scattering materials. So again, so what I've done here just to let you know for the environment, I put in an HDR, a textured environment HDR in the environment map slot and then now um, and then also what I've done was um, let's go over to our Okay, right now we have direct light, and that's okay, we can use that. But once we go into um, our subsurface scattering, we're gonna have to change our kernel type. And also, before I get into any of the material creation, I just wanna shut off one of my uh, GPUs. Okay, so let's work with our porcelain uh, material here that we have. Okay, so it's going to focus that guy there. So, first thing we want to do is come over to our material, uh, get new material, and we are going to apply our octane glossy material. Okay, did I just lose that window? Let's bring that up here. Octane glossy material applied to the vase. It almost pretty much does exactly what we needed to do, but we're just going to gloss it up just a bit more. Okay, make it a little bit more interesting. And we'll make this a little bit more white. Okay. I'm just gonna do one thing here before so my settings are a little bit, uh, it's going to bring our aperture down right now. I'm not going to really focus on the um, depth of field at this point. So, all right, so pretty much we have a realistic um, porcelain material right out of the box just by just changing a little bit of the uh, material settings here of the index. And uh, I'm almost, I'm pretty much happy with that. And we can also, you know, add some bump map if we like, um, just to kind of give it some texture. If I could do the turbulence texture. Okay, and I bring up the, uh, some more, let's change these settings just a bit. Okay, and I'll bring our power down a bit. Let's do 0 .0, 0.003. Oops. Okay, just to give it a little bit of roughness. That'll work. Okay. 
Okay. And I don't know. That's to me. That's pretty much it. There's not really much to it there. Um, you know, if you want to be more reflective, you can. You don't even have to go with the porcelain look. I'm just kind of showing you guys that uh, you can use this kind of material just to get that porcelain uh, white look to your vase. Okay, and then our grass blades, um, we're just going to have to apply. I'm going to go to our kernel. We'll come down to kernel type. We're going to go to PMC. Okay, and that's going to scatter our light and also we're going to get better results with our blade, okay? So we'll save eyes. Come over to our new material here. And we're going to start off with the diffuse material. Alright, so we're going to just go into the diffuse color here. We're going to make it green. Okay. Go with that for now. And then what we need to do is get our subsurface scattering working. So we can do that by going to the medium slot here and using the scattering um, map. We're going to change these guys over to value, the absorption, and we're also going to change the scattering as well. Okay, but in order for this to, uh, scattering to work, we also have to go with our transmission. And uh, we can either change the color here or we can come in and add a RGB spectrum texture. All right, you can already see the gray is being applied. So this is gonna help just kind of give us some realism here. Something like this. So come back to our scattering, we can actually start to play with, um, you can see the change the objects here, but also we can play with the, uh, the scattering and absorption um, values here. So as we actually move around, you can see in the light here, which this is a very good example of it. So as we um, just kind of focus in on there, can we move these guys? Okay, so how much scattering is happening here. We can also bring this down to like a one, our scale. So you can see how much we're letting it, the absorption come through, all the light comes through the absor absorption. And um, you can see now there's some change there, but I'm gonna just take some of the absorption down up and bring them up a little bit. And let's bring the scattering swell up. And actually we gotta go to our phase put our change a couple of properties here, put it in negative. Let's bring this guy back up. Okay, you can see the change. Everything's looking pretty good. I just want to make sure that um, what I'm going to do is just try to change this. I'm not really seeing too much happening here, so I'm just going to back to our autofocus. Let's go back to, to a little more green. looking pretty good. You can see the, the light coming through. All right, just going to go back to our scattering. So four, three. So I'm just going to clean this up. Four, five, three, five. Okay, now obviously if you want to add, you know, some more geometry in here, maybe like a flower or something in there, uh, just to help break up some of that green uh, would be good. But 
I'm just going to stick with this for now. All right, and then what we need to do is add a mix material. So I'm just going to call this grass. Okay, and we, we need to mix, so we just got to get a little bit of um, some specular highlight or some kind of reflection into our grass blades. So I'm going to autofocus on, I keep wanting to just grab the uh, geometry there. Okay, so we're just going to now change this to a mix. We're going to keep our old material as sub material. Okay. And uh, material number two is going to be, copy this. We can make this a glossy. Okay. And you see now we got a little bit of gloss to it. Make that a little bit more. So you can now see the, the grass blades have just a little bit of a highlight to them. That has some realism to it. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Alright, so if we cancel this guy and just add a few a few more here okay we'll rotate them just so they look a little different View. Let's go to standard and singular box. Just got a little ground to this guy. I'm not going to do anything too fancy here, but uh, let's just do a little setup here. Oh. Oh. Can't type right now. Okay, there we go. We'll open our Octane viewport. Show a safe frame here. Okay, then we're just open up our material editor and we're just going to create a quick ground texture here. Okay, so I pretty much just want to add a glossy material. Apply to our ground. Come over to our diffuse, and we're going to add a RGB image. Okay, and I already have a texture. I'm just going to drag from the other screen in. All right, you can see we have a nice, like a texture ready to go. Okay, I'm just going to use a UVW map modifier, and we're just going to tighten these textures up just a bit. Okay, we hit refresh. Okay, we can also grab this guy, copy it, and paste it into the bump map as well. And that's just going to give us a little bit of uh, 
some roughness. We'll just bring this down a bit. Actually, we'll leave that 2.2. And I just want to darken up our texture a bit. I'm going to go to something like a 4. Let's get a little bit of contrast. Okay, so there you guys have it. Um, that's pretty much creating a simple vase in 3D Studio Max and rendering this out with um, Octane. What you can also do is you might see some fireflies going on. Octane has a clever um, let's go to, um, a render setup here. And we also, if you're using a camera or you're just using the standard um, render settings here tab, you can actually come down and, uh, where is it here? Actually, no, I'm going to go to the camera. And you can see where it says hot pixel removal. We can say 0.6, and that will clean up, or maybe even 0.5. It'll clean up a lot of the fireflies if you get that. And usually that happens with, um, also, if you want the caustic you can add some caustic blur. Um, I think that helps as well. Don't quote me on that. I believe if you bring that up, that will also help as well. Maybe 0.2. I don't know. Let's go back to 1. Okay. And let's just add a couple more just for. Uh, to get something similar that I had at the beginning image of all this, uh, of all these vases here. Okay, let's just randomize these. I know they're not really center of the pivot, but that's okay. This will be fine. Come back to our perspective. Okay. Refresh these guys again. It's auto focus. You're gonna get somewhere where you you like here, something like this maybe. Find a nice position <laughs> and let it render out. All right, guys, that concludes this video tutorial, and I hope you learned how you can create your own simple uh, architectural vases in 3D Studio Max. And um, stay tuned for more video tutorials at www.renderspaz.com. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, and there'll be more tutorials coming your way. So stay tuned. All right, guys, thank you very much, and we will see you shortly.